Hello everyone and welcome. In this Final Cut Pro tutorial, I'm going to go over how to correct skin tone colors and contrast and sharpening to your video. I thought this would be a great tutorial for those who are into YouTubing or anybody that uses Final Cut Pro for some of their video work. So let's get in here and get started. Now normally you see the little uh, angle views right here screen on the side where you can preview a lot of the angles in your videos and stuff. But we want to change that. We actually want to do some color correction and stuff. So we want to add some scopes to that. Okay. So the best way to do that is go over here to view. Now we click on view here. We now have this little uh, dialogue that pops down. Right now I have uh, the angles being shown. We can hide those, but actually I just want to click on show video scopes and that will automatically hide the angles anyway. So let me click on that. And we'll see now we have some scopes over here. We've got a vector scope and an RGB parade. All right, let's zoom in just a little bit here and first look at the RGB parade. As you can see, it's looking at the current video and it sees that the reds, the greens are a little bit stronger than the blues. Now we really want to balance those out to get a you know, good even white balance. And also if we go up here to the top and to the vector scope, we also have this little gray line. Now this is really helpful because that's our skin tone line. So we can kind of move these uh, light diagram here on the vector scope to kind of more cover that gray line. We can get our skin tones corrected. Okay. So let's kind of zoom out here. Now I want to go over here to my video. And the first thing we need to do is add some video corrections. So I'm just going to click on all from a video. And the first one that pops at the top is color correction. Just kind of drag that over to your timeline. And now we actually have a color board. Let's go ahead and click on the color board. Okay. Now we have here, we have color, saturation, and exposure. All right. First, let's just work with the color. Then we can come back to saturation and exposure next. All right. So we want to kind of look at this. Now I want to kind of move these around to where the, both the RGB parade is kind of more even. And this may actually cover more of the gray line. Now over here on the color area, we have a global adjustment for our two, uh, hues and tones. Then we have individual adjustments for each one of the uh, shadows you know, mid-tones and the highlights. For this one, we're just going to be moving the main one right here. It's kind of like double ringed. That's the global. So we want to kind of adjust this and pull it back just a little bit. If we shift over to one way, you notice we change those around. So we'll be very careful when we move these two. Okay. Now about right here, I have moved it down to about 80, which is 83 degrees at negative 3%. And that really did get my skin tones very uh, looking very nice. Now my RGB parade still isn't perfect, but this is, you know, fairly close. We see that none of them are actually clipping too much here. So I may just leave that one there. But if you really wanted to, you can you know, move those a little bit around more. You can also move these around. To kind of help adjust that color a little bit more too. I'm thinking right there looks actually really good and really natural looking. So now we've got our skin tones looking good. All right. Now let's go over here to saturation. We may want to kind of bump the saturation up a little bit. And of course, in saturation, we have a global adjustment, then a saturation for you know, your shadows, mid-tones, then highlights. If we look at this, we really just want to kind of, kind of boost the you know, color in the mid-tones. So I want to bring this up just a little bit. I would say about like around 20%. That'll keep things looking very natural without being you know, overly done. Okay. Now let's click on exposure over here. We can kind of adjust our exposure. Now we notice the chest and stuff here in the back of the video is kind of underexposed just a little bit. And the highlights don't seem like, the image does seem kind of flat. And that's because I do have the contrast turned down a great deal in the uh, DSLR. 
and that's so I can adjust these myself in post and get a better looking image out of it. Now first I'm going to start by pulling up my highlights so I think everything gets a little more perkier but not blown out. And again we want to pay attention to the RG Parade here. We never want to break above 100 here. If you break above 100 then you've uh, overdone it. Okay, But we also never want to break below zero here. So I'm going to kind of bring this up just a little bit. Then I can bring these down just a little bit, add more contrast. And I'm looking pretty decent. I think I may bring up the whites just a little bit more. Uh, get kind of close there. We know it's RGB parade. I want to back that down probably around 95. Yeah, about where it is right there. Let me zoom in in case anybody's wanting to look. That seems to be a good balance for the RGB parade. You can see the image now looks a lot better. has a little more contrast and stuff. Okay. Now let's back out of that one. Now we want to add another one here. I'm going to find one called Crisp Contrast. Let me just pull it out here. There it is. Crisp Contrast. We want to drop that over to our timeline too. Now, as we can see, that one really <laughs> added too much contrast. So if we go over here and look at, look at that one, we notice that it has run up to 100. And we really don't want to use 100. You want to be very careful with this one. Okay. So I'm going to put it back down to zero. Then I may pop it up to, say, like three. And kind of looked at it. Three was just a bit much. Okay. So let's try something maybe buck one. And one seems to work fairly well. I think one is about where I'm going to leave it for this video. Okay. Now there's another one we want to get, and that is sharpening. Okay. And we find it here, sharpening. And of course, if you're having trouble finding any of these, I am simply uh, typing it in down here at the bottom in the search. That way I can don't have to uh, sort through them and hunt through them. I just type in sharp and whatever close enough it listed as sharpening or has anything listed as sharpening in the title will come up. Okay. So let's drag sharpening over to our timeline here. Okay. Now the sharpening default is about 2.5, which is normally very, very good. But you can adjust it here. I think for this one, I may try five. Type in five and hit enter. Okay, and if we look at this, I think five worked really, really nice. Let's kind of just look at it really good here. See five. And if you're wondering what it does if you pull it up too much, as you can see, sharpening really doesn't look all that great if you get crazy with it. So I think about five looks nice. And we can also preview that if we need to. So let's go over here and just do a quick Whatever. preview. And it's run. Through the spotlight 2 which is the USB audio interface right. for XLR. Now, understand when you're going, oh, I hate looking, I'm looking funny when I'm explaining stuff. There I go. <laughs> anyway, you want to kind of blow, uh, blow it up to the big screen, kind of look at it a little bit closer, and kind of determine and pause the video because a lot of times the video, when you're playing it, is kind of in a proxy state. So it's not a full uh, higher uh, quality image. And you can see here, it still is very soft looking because it's been. Uh, kind of uh, lowered the rendered uh, quality. That way it plays a lot smoother here on my little Mac computer. But I think for the most part, that probably is going to look very, very nice. And what you can do is just kind of export it, you know, a small clip, look at it, and if it looks good. And if you need to do any final adjustments, you can also just readjust those again and re-export it since Final Cut Pro exports fairly fast anyway. But anyway, that's how I kind of adjust my videos and everything to kind of improve the uh, video quality, kind of do a sharpening, a, a skin color correction and everything. And anyway, if you found this Final Cut Pro tutorial helpful, how about give me a thumbs up. Thumbs up is always highly appreciated. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, be sure to subscribe. Subscribing is free, it's for you, and let you know when I release more videos. Until next time, everyone, thank you for watching.